Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. With Hurricane Ian just having rolled through Florida, these are our hurricane guns. I'll talk about what makes them a hurricane gun. The same characteristics that would make these hurricane guns would also make them useful for boaters, both freshwater and marine boaters. But the concept behind these guns, and it's unusual for the Glock to be set up this way, is they're set up to tolerate having been immersed and then once being removed from the water, firing immediately without any necessary cleaning or clearing. None of these are meant to be fired underwater. Firing a pistol underwater is kind of useless, but they are meant to be fired immediately after having come out of the water. And they, they would work underwater, but it's not gonna be effective. So most pistols that will tolerate being wet are hammer fired because the striker or the firing pin is just a pin that just rocks back and forth. There's nothing to interfere with it. So many hammer fired guns will work after being immersed. This one happens to be the Sig Sauer P226 Navy. And I misspoke, this is the MK25 or the Mark 25. And it has the anchor logo. This is one easy way to identify it. And this gun has some internal features to protect against corrosion, especially in a hostile environment such as salt water. And it is designed to be immersed, pulled out of the water, and function reliably immediately afterwards. And it's used by uh, Navy SEALs. Many different SEAL, Navy SEAL groups have used this. So this is one that you could take out into a hurricane. So what makes a hurricane different than a rainstorm? Uh, if you've experienced one, you'll know. But if you haven't, there is so much water coming down that you are immediately soaked. Everything in your pockets is immediately soaked. It's going out into a hurricane and walking to the car is no different than jumping in the pool and climbing out. You're just instantaneously soaked. And just as an example, the area of Florida, central Florida, usually gets about eight inches of rain in September, the entire month of September. During Hurricane Ian, we got 10 to 15, depending on who you ask, in about a six to eight hour period. So to anywhere from one and a half to two times the entire month's allotment, which would be 30 days for September, in a six or eight hour period. So if you've got a gun somewhere on you, it is going to be wet. Not just damp, not just a few drops of water on it, but soaked completely wet. No different than you actually went in the water. So taking something like which we would normally carry, you know, I normally carry this Glock 26 and Hammer frequently carries this Hellcat. These are good, reliable guns, but would likely have problems firing reliably after having gotten that soaked. So this makes a good carry gun as well as nightstand bump in the night gun. Another offering that is similar in that characteristic is this Walther PPQ Navy SD. And this is still on Walther's site. You know, they've discontinued the majority of the PPQ line and replaced it with a PDP. This is still on their sites. I don't know if it's still being manufactured new or not, but there's a, an international special, special forces group and they undisclosed, so they're not saying who it is, that they made these for. And it has similar characteristics to the SIG in that it's designed to be used after having been immersed. Now, why is that a big deal? Well, this is a striker gun, and most striker guns don't like being immersed. The striker channel that has the, both the spring and the firing pin has these cups that hold the spring in place. And those cups act like kind of like a piston ring on a, an engine, and they will create a hydrostatic lock. So they can interfere with the firing pin moving forward, either prevent it from moving forward, or cause it to move forward so slowly that it it doesn't impact the primer enough to fire the round. There are drain holes. All, all of the striker guns will have a drain hole, but it will drain too slowly to be effective. This has the cups that are designed to allow that water to vent through and have the piston come forward or the striker come forward. So the, if you're not into the hammer guns, and then, you know, this is fairly heavy. This gun is 34 ounces. This one is 22 ounces. That can make a big difference. The Walther PPQ would be one that would work reliably in those types of conditions. And the last one I've got on the table is this Glock 19X. And Glocks typically are not designed to tolerate immersion. The 19X is unique in that it has Glocks maritime cups. And I'm going to put up a picture 
So I'll put it up over this. And what you can see is the cup that is the standard one, which is on the left, is a solid ring. It's just a smooth solid ring. So again, it kind of acts like, the, like a piston ring on an engine. Normally it's just moving air and it's just enough smaller that the air just passes through, so it's not a problem. If you look at the one on the right, it kind of looks like a gear. So it's got enough protrusion to keep the, the striker centered in the channel, but those cutouts that are alternating allow the water to pass through. So the Glock 19X will work after having been immersed, whereas a regular Glock 19 or that 26 that I normally carry would not. Now you can get those cups aftermarket and you can retrofit a gun. There's a disadvantage to the Maritime cups. You do have to clean the striker channel more often. The regular ones do kind of prevent debris from getting into the channel, so you have to clean the striker channel more often. And interestingly enough about the 19X, Glock doesn't mention this anywhere on their site. It was discovered by various people and they posted it on the internet. And of course, I disassembled this one to be able to demonstrate that. But for some reason, they chose to put the Maritime Cups in the 19X. The Glock is kind of between the two in weight. It's 24.83 ounces versus the PPQ's 22 and definitely less than the SIG's 34. Capacity is similar on these. This has got 17 round capacity in the flush mag and of course it can go up to the 33 stick mags. If you're thinking about it for the, the getting wet concept, I would avoid all the various drums and things like that. They're probably not going to function well if, if they get full of water, but the magazines will function correctly. The SIG is a 15 round mag and I'm not aware of any extended mag capability with it. And the PPQ comes with a 15 and a 17. Now when you put the 17 in it, of course, it's going to extend the grip. Most of the time when you're looking, if you're boating or you're dealing with adverse conditions like hurricanes, you're a little less focused on getting the smallest, lightest, most comfortable, convenient thing. You're more focused on getting something that's going to be effective and work. And there are new threats that come into play, both with boating and with hurricanes, in that you're going to have snakes and things like that that normally wouldn't be in your environment are going to be readily present in your environment. In fact, we saw at least one, if not a couple, moccasins in the yard, kind of working through. And then, of course, you're going to have, at least in the hurricane condition, you're going to potentially have looters that would normally not dare step foot into a neighborhood that has power and all the alarm systems and surveillance systems are working. So that kind of gives you a little bit of idea of either boating use or hurricane use, guns that would work well in that kind of adverse condition. And I'm actually not going to declare a winner in this case because there really is a different purpose of these. When you're using them in this case, it's, it's function, and that's really what you're going after. Beyond that, if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, click that bell to be notified if you do. Check us out on Facebook, Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, Getter, Rumble. We're pretty much everywhere, and thank you.